Okay, today I'm working on a starter motor out of my own car. It's a 1986 Toyota Cressida. The problem I was having with this thing is I'd go to turn my ignition switch and all I'd hear is a click. You'd hear the starter engaging, I'm sorry, the solenoid engaging, but you wouldn't hear the motor turning over. And I knew what it was because many years ago I had the same problem. Basically the way it works is this. When you apply current to this tab right here, your hot lead goes there and your, your ground of course is the chassis of the unit itself. That causes the solenoid to engage and as the solenoid flies down and makes contact with these two copper tabs right here and here. And what that does is allow the hot side of your battery, it's got that nice thick red cable on it, to go from here to here which has an output that goes directly to the motor itself. The reason I have this solenoid is if you were to try to pass the same amount of current required to start this starter motor through your ignition switch, you'd burn up the ignition switch. So the way it works is your ignition switch allows you to switch a much smaller current to the input terminal on your solenoid and that allows the hot side of your battery to be transferred from here to here when this engages, when this copper ring right here makes contact with these two copper tabs right here. So, uh, fortunately, we have a very uh, kind alternator and starter rebuilder shop in town, and he was willing to sell me this little tab here. Oop, let me see if I can keep that camera from shaking. You can see the way the old one is eaten, eaten away from the, the copper ring slamming down on it over and over again over the years, making contact. And that's why I was starting to get resistance there. Not much meat left on that. Surprisingly, the other side isn't too bad, really but uh, you can definitely see the difference between the two there. Anyway, the only hard part was uh, getting this starter out. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm a skinny person that's uh, with a lot of flexibility in my hands and arms, uh, I'd be in trouble. In fact, I had to use a lot of extensions on my uh, sockets. Uh, I had to come up with about, uh, I think, a foot and a half to two feet of extensions to be able to get that top bolt on this thing. Obviously, uh, Toyota wasn't thinking too much of the guy that had to repair the thing when they went ahead and uh, designed this. For those that don't already know, a relay is much like a starter solenoid, only it's constructed a little bit differently. But it does essentially the same thing. It allows you to use a very small current to close a switch that passes a much higher current. For example, this relay I've got in my hand here. I'm going to go ahead and hook it on this battery. You can see for about 100 milliamps of input current, which is very small, I can potentially transfer 10 amperes of current through these other contacts at close. The relay has a normally open contact and a normally closed contact, so you can either turn it off if it's already on when you trigger it, or you can turn it on from being in an off position. But again, it takes a very low input current to switch it. Now, most of the time, you're going to find the current capacity of the relay on the outside of the case, but I have seen a situation where it didn't state anything on the outside, so you pull the case off and inside and tell you the uh, relay part number and its current capacity. The other thing I was going to say, from time to time, you may find a relay that has a problem. It's not that common, but I have seen on occasion where all you need to do is get in there with a small piece of emery cloth and file down the contact points. You have to be careful though, if it's too badly pitted and you take off too much metal in the process of sanding it, you're going to find it won't make good contact, in which case you either have to discard it or possibly bend the tab so it'll make contact. But in this case, we've got a good solid relay here and I thought along the topic of demonstrating what a solenoid is, I may as well talk about relays too since they're found in a lot of televisions. Okay, I hope you found that information helpful and thanks for watching.